We've spoken about companies in the group, and again, I'm just going to reiterate that, where you can have some odd situations. We had a situation a number of years ago with a deal that involved a sponsor. And for some sort of arcane accounting reason, it turns out that the whole co, the bid co, yeah, so normally you'd have your covenants with your bid co, and you've got new co's going up here. Here's your target co over here, so there's bid co over here. Now, normally your covenants should cover that downwards, and then you're going to have exclusions, etc., for dormant subs and stuff like that. What happened here, uh, and I didn't, you know, the account, one of my accounting guys started explaining to me, I said, look, I don't need to understand this. But the net effect was, as a result of the acquisition, it gave rise to certain deferred income, which effectively meant that although there was no impact on the cash, this thing suddenly had a huge pole in, in, in the profit going forward for the first year as a result of this merger. Um, issue that arose for some, as I said, some arcane accounting convention. And so the net effect, rather unusually, we in, in structured the covenants, the covenant package therefore excluded that, and we just covered this going forward. I mean, to be fair, this really, you know, you'd include the debt definition there, because your debt's going in there. So for one purpose, you'd have, you'd have the, the debt as a whole of the group, but, but for the purposes of the, of the revenue, it only looked at, uh, at, at you know, at, at what, and we excluded that, that top code. Covenants on a, on a rolling quarterly basis, nothing too dramatic about that. I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the compliance certificate and how that interacts and when the, when the breach actually occurs. Let's take a situation. Let's say we've got something, we've got 30th of September, we've got 31 December, uh, and the situation is we're sitting over here. The compliance certificate normally goes in six weeks from here. Okay, six weeks, 45 days, something like that. So the question is, from a, from a borrower's perspective, you know that you're going to need your revolver here sometime in April or May. So one of the questions is, when does the breach occur? You know that you're going to comply here, but you know that, you're, you know that as at this date, you're not going to be in compliance. You're going to default. And one of the ways of testing you know, when the default actually occurs is to ask yourself, could I draw down on my revolver here? Yes. Could I draw down on my revolver there? No. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yes, you could, I reckon. More interestingly is what about this period here? Can you draw down there? 